Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's video is actually a sequel to my earlier reminder pop up video. In the previous video, the reminder was based on a yes no field, a checkbox, either yes or no for whether or not you have to follow up with this customer. Well, lots of you emailed me asking if that could be a date instead. You want to put a follow up date in your table. So we'll cover that in this video. This video goes out by popular request. This is one of those times where I've gotten dozens of emails and other comments about a previous video that I did. Lots of you said you enjoyed my previous video on pop-up reminders, but in that video I just used a, a checkbox, yes or no. Everyone's asking, can you base it on a date, like an appointment or a follow-up date? Well, of course you can. You just have to change the DLOOKUP statement just a little bit. So here's the template from that previous class. If you haven't watched that class yet, go watch it right now. There's a link down below in the links section. Gold members, you can grab a copy of this template from the download folder. Everyone else, you're going to have to build the database yourself. Sorry. But it's good practice for you to build these databases along with me instead of just downloading the template. So this is the member template, and as you can see, it's got a countdown timer on the main menu that pops up to the notice window. I'm just going to pause that right now and then close this guy. I really need to start saving the free templates, too. I just usually save the members one. So let me go in here and revert this guy back to the way it used to be. I'm going to delete these controls here in the code that handle that. Okay, so here we are pretty much back to where we were before. In the original database, we looked up an ID from the customer table where is active is true. That's the criteria that we used to determine whether or not to open up the reminder window. Well, pretty much all we have to do is just substitute this with a date. So let's say we've got a follow-up date for our customers. Let's go to our customer table, design view. Now, I've already got a date in here that I really don't use. I've got this customer sense date. Let's just repurpose this. Let's call this follow-up date. All right, save that. And let's go in here, and these follow-up dates that are in here, these, let's get rid of these. Delete, 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 delete. Let's put in there one from the past. So today is 121, I think it is. Yeah, today, oh, today's the 22nd, Friday the 22nd. All right, so I'll put today's date in there for that one. And let's do one that's in the past that I should have called already. And let's put uh, two in here that I don't have to call yet. So 125, and then uh, 25. So those shouldn't show up, or those shouldn't trigger the reminder window. All right, let's adjust the customer form. Let me close this and reopen it, main menu. Let's go to the customer form. Oh, it's going to pop this notice up, of course, because it's still working on this is active. Let me undo that one. I think that's the only is active guy. Let's see. Customer T, where is is active? Yeah, okay. All of them are blank now, so I shouldn't see that reminder window at all. All right, customer form. Let's redo... The customer sent. Now you can see that Access changed the control source, the field that this guy is bound to, but it didn't change the name. So let's just take follow up date, copy that up here, paste. It's got the same name too. And the label, let's just update the label, right? Follow up date. Okay, we're all set there. Let's add this guy to the customer list too. I'm just going to copy it from here. Copy. Let's go to the customer list. Let's put it on here so we can see the follow up date right next to these other guys. Right, and I'll just paste it right there. I'll get rid of the label. All right, slide you over here like that. Okay, let's make all of these guys right click size to grid. There we go. Maybe copy this label, copy paste, slide it up here. Follow up date, just like that. Shrink that up, shrink that up, save it, close it, close it save it <laughs> right customer list there's my follow-ups and you'll see why I wanted this here in a second all right we're gonna open this up to show your follow-ups okay customer forms got it customer list got it okay now let's go to our timer event design view open this up come down to on the event tab here come down to timer interval make sure that's whatever interval you want we talked about that in the last class members I know I set yours to a thousand for the one second timer make sure it's at five five seconds or 10 seconds or whatever. So 5,000, I'm going to set mine to for five seconds. Remember, these are milliseconds. Let's go into the timer event. 
right here is what we have to change. Now we're still looking up an ID. I still want to see if there are any customers in the customer table. But instead of is active equals true, we're going to say here follow up date has to be less than or equal to. And then I'm going to put now in there, but it's got to be inside of these guys, right? The pound symbols. Remember, if we're putting an actual date in here, like 1 1 2000, it looks like that inside of date symbols, those little hashtags or octothorps or whatever you want to call them. All right, these guys. But I don't want the actual date in there. I want to put today's date in there. So I have to close that and date like that and then open it back up again. All right, see what that does? That says take today's date, put it between these guys, and put this in the criteria. That's a little string concatenation. If you've never done concatenation before, I'll put a link down below in the video. Now, if you want just today's date, remember that's today's date at midnight. What if you had a follow-up for this morning at 7 a.m.? So I like to put in here now for something like this. That puts today's date and time in there. Okay? This way, if it's currently 9 a.m. and you've got a follow-up for 8 a.m., you can, you can start using the time portion as well. All right, so that'll check it based on the date. It'll still return an ID. If that ID is not zero, open up the notice form. Okay, that's really the only major change we had to make. All right, let's save that, close it, open it back up again, and let's wait five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and there it is. There are customers to follow up with. Now, this guy right now, if I click open, all right, it's displaying this form. Let's change what this guy displays. Right click design view and I'm going to shut this so the timer event stops all right in here it'd be nice if we could see the follow-ups we have to make so let's open up the customer list form where same kind of criteria here right follow up Fulu follow up date is less than or equal to now and we have to put that inside of these guys Okay, just like that. Save it, close it, chop it up, wrap it, and here we go. And we'll wait five seconds. There it is. All right. And remember, this guy, this guy pops up wherever you saved it last. So slide it wherever you want it on your form and then hit save. All right, I'm going to put mine right next to the main menu right there. Save. Okay, now open. And there we go. There's the follow-ups that I have that are either... Now we're in the past. Now, yeah, this guy is going to pop up every five seconds. Again, like I said in the last video, I'm going to assume you have this set to something like every 15 minutes or every half an hour so it doesn't keep popping up in your face. And in the members video for the previous, for the original class, I show you how, so, how you can make this guy pop up and then return focus to the form you were working on so it doesn't really interrupt you. Okay? So that's all you got to do to make this show up based on a date in your database instead of just a yes-no box. It's just simply a matter of changing this. Okay? Thank you all so very much for the feedback. I love getting feedback from you guys when I release a video. People ask lots of questions about it. Hey, can we do this with it? Can we do that with it? I do keep all of those comments on a list, and I do use them for future videos, especially when, you know, 10 people have already asked me a certain question, a specific question, whether the members or not. And then a gold member asks the same thing. Then I'm like, oh, wait, 10 other people wanted to know this too. So then I'll do that one right away. Like this one, I got, I got at least 20, 30 people that sent me emails and posted comments about this. Want to learn more in the extended cut for members? I'll show you how to add a snooze button to the pop-up window. So you can pick the snooze interval, like don't bother me for an hour or two hours or whatever interval you want to specify. Click the snooze button, then it goes away. Plus, don't forget, you get all the stuff from the previous Extended Cut video, too, which is adding that countdown timer to your main menu. So you can see it actually counting down. That's in the Extended Cut for members. Remember, Silver members and up get access to all of my Extended Cut videos, and we are now over 100 Tech Help videos, so there's plenty of material to watch. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. 
But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.